Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna be showing you how you can make your own custom chatbot with ChatGPT. They just launched this as a new feature that you can use to create anything you want, any variation of ChatGPT that you've ever wanted to use, either it's for your business or for your personal life. This video is gonna show you how you can do it easily and succinctly. Let's dive into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to log into your ChatGPT account and then you're gonna to wanna to go to the Explore tab here where you're gonna find everything in regards to how to create a GPT. Now do keep in mind that this is only a feature available to the paying users or enterprise users of ChatGPT. If you don't have a paying account, you will not be able to get access to this at this point in time. But now that you have this, if you have the paying account, then you can create your own GPT. I'm gonna create a sales trainer bot just to show you guys what's possible with this. So I'm gonna click create a GPT, which again, keep in mind this is still in beta and I'm going to give it a name. In order to give it a name, you go in the configure tab here and then you click name your GPT. So I'm gonna call it sales trainer and you can call this anything you want. I mean, the whole point is to be as creative as possible. And I definitely recommend trying to be as creative as you can because remember, this is a bot that can solve any problem for you at, at right now. I mean, if you wanna have it be your research assistant, you can give it a whole bunch of data that you can upload and have it reference when it's giving you answers of what it wants to research or what you want it to research. So be as creative as possible in this step and try thinking of a way that you can actually utilize it to its fullest capacity in your day-to-day -day life. Now, for example, for my bot, what I'm doing is I'm uploading a lot of reference material around how to actually sell uh, B2B services. And from that, what I'm doing is I'm gonna reference questions about that document whenever I ask it, whenever I ask the bot something. And so you remember, it has to be something you already have information on, ideally. That way you can customize this bot to basically recall that information. Now, it doesn't have to be just something that you reference, but it's gonna make the bot a lot better if you do reference information. Now, at the bottom here, you have the capability section. The whole point of the capability section is to select, do you want web browsing, dolly image generation, or code interpreter? This basically allows you to run different kinds of code, and then it could analyze data, math, do all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm gonna keep that unselected for now. For now, all I need is the web browsing capability um, selected here. Now, once I've selected how I actually want this ChatGPT's function to be, I'm going to pick a document that I'm gonna upload as knowledge to reference inside the chatbot. In this case, it's gonna be how to sell Twiz, which is the company that I own, how to sell our services. And so I'm gonna upload this into ChatGPT and it's gonna reference this inside the bot itself. So I went up here and I actually downloaded the actual file as a PDF and then I'm gonna go and upload it now. Now keep in mind, the cool part is you could actually have this be a really large document, up to 300 pages. The one that I'm uploading is about 12, 18 pages maximum, but you can upload huge documents that you have for repositories of information you might wanna reference in this bot. Now what I've done next is I'm actually using ChatGPT to come up with the description and instructions for this sales trainer bot, at least to an extent. And I came up with a name here for the sales trainer bot called Ace Pitch. I think it's kind of a cool name. Um, so I'm gonna make that the name for this. I've also went and asked, what does this bot do? So it can actually give a description for what this bot can do, which is pretty awesome because if you're busy or on the go, you can actually put this in here. Now, I'm just gonna put this first line in here just so that way it's a placeholder. It's pretty relevant to what um, I'm talking about and I'll just mention Twiz in the description and also in the instructions here as well. So now as you can see, I've added a description to this bot, which is saying that it's a sales trainer bot designed to assist in improving sales skills and techniques for my company and a list of instructions, which is just to recall information from my knowledge base to help me sell my services to potential clients. Now I've seen people get really funky, funky with the description and the instruction section. You can use a really long list of instructions for customizing this chatbot to the fullest abilities. And I recommend that you be really creative with this section because remember, this is essentially an assistant that's willing to do anything that you need to do, whether it's research or any other kind of content generation tasks. So the instructions are really pivotal. You can keep them really short, you can make them very long. However you choose to do it, it's gonna help make this chatbot a bit more efficient. So now that I've done that, it actually it asks, asks you what kind of conversation starters do you wanna have? So what is the best way to sell Twiz services? What is the ideal structure for a Twiz sales call? So you can add these and they'll actually be prompt right here that you can then go and click on and essentially have it run right from the jump. This could be a good way to kind of 
help somebody know where they should start when it comes to actually using this kind of a bot. And again, I've went and uploaded the knowledge base here, so then that way it can be uh, run during the prompting. Now, I don't know if you can see this at the bottom here, but you do have the additional settings section which says use conversation data in your GPT to improve our models. You can choose to keep it private or you can choose to share it. Whatever you choose to do, it will essentially be up to you. Another really cool thing you can do if interested is actually add actions to the particular bot that will actually allow for calls to additional services. So this is one that they just gave me to show as an example, but essentially you can actually connect to different APIs and you could have different schema in here for those API calls. Now this might be a little advanced for the average ChatGPT user, but it allows you to pull specific information from various places. So if you wanted to interact with an API for this chatbot, you could. Now I will say one thing that makes all this so exciting is the fact that everyone can in a sense be almost like a developer, uh, an AI developer. And before access to AI systems like this were extremely costly and expensive and gated. So it just wasn't as possible to be able to interact with AI in this way. And now everyone in a sense is kind of an AI developer. Now one thing that's kind of cool is you can actually upload an image into here and choose upload photo or upload Dolly. And in this case, I said use Dolly just to see what it came up with. And here's what it has. It's kind of cool, honestly. Very interesting design. But now that you've done all that, you can start prompting the AI engine to see what it comes up with. So I'm going to pick one of these prompts, which is what is the best way to sell to his services and see what it comes up with. Now, keep in mind that as this is actually being used, it's going to have answers that are a bit off at the beginning. They're not always going to be perfect. And this is kind of where the hard work comes in of tweaking the AI bot. There's some use cases that are extremely good and it can use right away, but otherwise it's not the best. So I just went and said it was searching the knowledge. Here's what it came up with. Now, as you can see here, it does come up with the structure from the knowledge base, which is pretty incredible. The fact that it was able to read the document that I provided and come up with very tangible uh, answers. Now, it's gonna then ask me to rate this information. And to be honest, I think it's pretty cool that it can just instantly pull these pieces of information. I mean, think of the potential with, let's say like a help center um, or, or an FAQ section, what you can do with that is pretty astonishing. And so again, this is just something that you can do right away and you can add all your own information to this to get started using the platform. So what you're gonna do next after you've prompted it a few times and you've configured this bot is you're gonna go up here and you're gonna hit save. Now you can choose how you want to save it. It could be public, only people with link, or only me. In this use case, I'm just going to keep it only people with link, so in that way it makes things a little bit easier uh, for me at the moment. Keep in mind you can also delete the GPT. So say you don't want to use this GPT anymore and you want to move on to a different GPT and you don't want it to accidentally be shared with anybody, then you can delete the GPT as well. Now one thing that's pretty cool is you have your preview here on the right side, but you also have your GPT builder here on the left side. So as you can see, when you're actually constructing this thing, it's gonna ask you questions like, here's the profile picture for Ace Pitch. Do you like it or would you like to make any changes? At which point you can then ask and you can say, hey, what do you think about changing this or tweaking that? And then it will actually adjust the GPT based on your inputs. Now I've gone and actually hit save on the bot and then what I can see is that in the top left corner I have Ace Pitch and I have ChatGPT. It actually tells me exactly what the purpose of it is and allows me to interact with it on a daily basis inside the ChatGPT platform. Now obviously all of this is pretty remarkable and after you're done creating your own bot, you can then release it publicly as long as you have the proper privacy policy URL added, kind of similar to the iOS or App Store or the Google Android Play Store. Um, to say that all of this is incredible would be an understatement. I mean, it's a definitely a huge shift in the way that technology is going to be built going forward. And I'm pretty excited to see what comes next. Now, do keep in mind that with this, there are definitely safety concerns, ethical concerns. So if you're building your own bot, definitely keep those things in mind. But these can be the, the use cases for this can be incredible for your business, for your own personal life to make everybody more efficient. And I'm personally very excited about it. Thank you so much for watching this video on how to create your own custom chatbot using OpenAI software. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe and share with somebody you think might also find it useful. Uh, feel free to comment if you have any questions. I'll be making content like this every single week. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.